Are you a Luddite writing code in a text editor or are you a hero using Vim to create beauty in C++? Are you an feet beginner who doesn't understand enough to escape the clutches of your IDE or are you an expert who wields the IDE with speed and skill? This is another of those us versus them debates that we software developers seem to be so fond of. So what are the pros and cons of an IDE versus a text editor? Hi, I'm Dave Farley of Continuous Delivery. Welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, please do hit subscribe. And if you enjoy the content today, hit like as well. My new book, Modern Software Engineering, is out now and getting great reviews. So check that out too. Links are also for that in the description. I am a long time IDE user. I've tried a variety of different products. I've also written and continue to write code in text editors too. Also many different variety over the years. I should be clear that JetBrains, the producers of the IntelliJ family of IDEs, sponsor me to a small degree, in that they give me a free license for the commercial version of their tools. But that doesn't mean that they have influenced this content in any way at all, other than that I use and like their tools. In a professional development organisation, wrongly or rightly, you don't always get the choice for your development tools. For the purposes of this exploration though, for on the pros and cons, let's assume that you have a free choice. Then which should you choose? As ever, I don't think it's quite that simple. There are lots of different ideas that affect our choice. Some of them are obvious, some are subtle, at least to my eyes. Some of them are just plain dumb. Let's start with the advantages of an IDE. A modern IDE is a complex, sophisticated piece of software. They give you lots of help in lots of different aspects of development. I think that the minimum to qualify as an IDE is probably something that includes the ability to edit code, compile it and debug it all within the tool itself. Modern IDEs add lots more to this list of features though. We can create projects from templates, integrate with other technologies, connect to remote processes to debug them. And two of the abilities that I value very highly indeed, they allow us to navigate around large code bases, clicking on functions to see their definitions and searching for callers of those functions. And they automate the ability to refactor our code, sometimes in very sophisticated ways. Beyond that, we get things like syntax highlighting, code completion, and many, many other features. What this means is that we can very quickly create and start work on a new project. And our IDE will generate a directory structure and maybe some template code that will compile and generate the type of output that we really want. Then we can start editing our code and our IDE will help us with the syntax, fill in some of the details for us as we type. If we start typing a call to a function in our code, our IDE will list the options and allow us to fill in the details once again. If we make a mistake, our IDE will highlight it so that we can fix it straight away. It will even look up function signatures and suggest variable names for us. This fast, easy start is a big win, particularly when you're starting out as a developer. But it also helps for old dudes like me who work in a lot of different languages, and so I'm not, not always current in all of them. I can lean on my IDE to remind me of co correct syntax and help me find useful libraries and tools. Here's a quote from the producers of Atom, a very popular programmer's text editor. If you want something that you can just jump into and be productive right away in a specific technology, perhaps an IDE is what you're looking for. If you want a tool that you can shape and customise into exactly what you want out of it, even if it costs you some time up front configuring things, then an editor is probably more your speed. I think that this is a pretty good summary of the startup advantages of an IDE. In the beginning, though, all of this came at a very big cost. These things used to be very slow compared to text editors. There's a lot going on in an IDE to give you that clear feedback. They're, they're working hard all of the time to interpret what it is that you're trying to do, even what it is that you're trying to type. 
Some modern IDEs will even suggest alternative design choices, for example recommending some more functional use of our language when we type something that uses older libraries or language features. These days though, our hardware is so good that if I'm honest I can't tell any difference in the performance between an IDE and a basic text editor, except on startup that is. Once they're up and running, both work much faster than I can type. In practice, when I'm working on some code, I tend to leave my IDE open, so rarely see the startup cost. I guess the primary disadvantage of an IDE is locking. Over time, you become somewhat habituated to the support that it gives you. As a result, if you want to switch to a language that is not supported in your IDE, then that can be a big, steep learning curve. This is where a text editor shines. A text editor uh, just edits text. That's pretty much it, so it's enormously flexible. In reality, most modern programmers' text editors uh, do more than that. Most these days offers things like syntax highlighting for supported languages and integration with other tools, allowing you to compile or run tests, so not that different really to a basic IDE. Here is a simple example of the difference. This is a simple class designed to add fractions. It's running in my IDE, IntelliJ. I'm going to make a mistake in the code as I start typing, and you can see that my IDE suggests some ideas that might help. But when I make the name of the constructor invalid here, it highlights the mistake and warns me that there are 10 problems related to the mistake. It also highlights those problems everywhere that they occur in the code and would allow me to navigate to them very easily. Here's the same thing in my programmer's text editor. I'm using a Mac application called TextMate. Here I make the same change, but although there is syntax highlighting, there's no real understanding of the programming language built into the editor beyond that. So in this case, I don't even get the warning that this won't compile. Of course, as soon as I try to compile it, it will fail and tell me, but that means that I only find that out much later uh, th um, than I do in the IDE. So there are some big advantages to the IDE in this case. Much faster feedback on the mistakes. But it comes at the cost of being tied into the support that your IDE offers, which may or may not be a problem for you. The problem here is that as devs, our familiarity with our tools is a pretty big investment of time. It takes a, a while to, to switch between different tools. If you spend your entire career inside only one IDE, or one text editor for that matter, then you probably don't even have useful terminology that lets you search for help when trying to find features that you need in an alternative. In reality, they mostly do similar things, and while switching might be a chore, it's not that big of a chore. The lock-in idea is the one that the text editor producers usually seem to promote. I must confess I'm not so sure that it's really valid these days. The popular IDEs like Eclipse, JetBrains Family of Products, NetBeans, Visual Studio, Xcode, etc. all support many different languages, build systems and frameworks. These days, I mostly use a programmer's editor for reading code, usually when I'm searching for an idea or an example for something, or for writing and managing simple shell scripts or, or, or similar. I might write a bit of Python for some simple command line thing in my text editor, but this is mostly down to startup time. My preferred IDE takes a few seconds to start up, even on my shiny new Mac. The instant start of a text editor is nice for small, simple things. I tend to use a broadish mix of different languages and technologies in my work, so you'd think that I'd be a good target for the text editor to keep my workflow stable. But I don't. I mostly use my IDE for those sorts of things including sometimes experimenting with completely new languages or frameworks. So I'm a bit sceptical of the stable workflow argument that the text editor producers and fans tend to talk about. 
I don't think that beyond the very basics of compiling, editing, compiling and running tests that my workflow is very stable between tech stacks really. There are differences depending on what it is that I'm doing and what I'm using. It seems to me at least as difficult to configure and maintain a working development environment for a text editor as it is for an IDE. The text editor ultimately does give me much more flexibility, but for me at least, my IDE already gives me more flexibility than I usually need. And the IDE supports and enhances my memory much better, making it easier for me to switch context between different languages or text stacks. The IDE features that I value most though, refactoring support and code navigation, um, are really ingrained into how I write, write code. I don't write code linearly, I mould it and shape it to meet my needs. And so a few basic refactorings and the ability to jump around in the code are a permanent feature of how I tend to write code. This is the feature that I miss most when I use text editors. Of course, this is all down to personal preference, but there is one more thing that I feel that I must mention. Quite a lot of this is also a, something of a fashion statement. I think that the most likely predictor of whether you as a professional programmer choose to use an ID or a text editor is probably the language that you code in. Why is that? Why should language make any difference at all? Given the power of modern hardware to interactively analyse our code, even for uncooperative languages, I can only think of two reasons. First, that some languages have poor IDE support, and second, that a, langu a language has a community around it who somehow promote one choice over the other. These days, the first reason is really pretty unlikely, unless you're programming in something very esoteric indeed. There's IDE support for all sorts of languages. Uh, these are not the most obscure languages, but there's certainly support for Haskell, Clojure, even for COBOL. I think that the second of these two is the main reason. My last full-time programming job was working for a trading company, working financial trading systems. Our main programming languages were C++, Java, and Python, with a smattering of others around the building. Java de developers in that environment exclusively used IDEs, different kinds of IDEs, but almost entirely always using an IDE of some kind. Python developers tended to use a mix, but mostly the developers were using a text editors of some kind. And C++ developers, who were the majority, exclusively used text editors, most using either Vim or Emacs. Vim is the new version of Vi. Vim is 29 years old. Vi was written for a dumb terminals and 80 character displays. I confess that I really, really don't get the appeal. I've used both Vim and Vi, and even in experienced hands, not necessarily mine, it's slow and clunky. Pretty sure that I will get some hate for saying that, but that I have paired with people using both on the same code base on the same day, and I've seen the difference. The only advantage I see in Vi is that it is everywhere, even on servers, at least in the Unix world. But provisioning your servers should be automated anyway, so who cares? I'm pretty sure, at least in the C++ community, that tools like Vim and Emacs hang around because there's a cultural pressure. One of my friends, a very good C++ developer, once told me when I asked him why he used Vim that he thought that other C++ programmers would think he was a noob if he'd used an IDE. He may have been joking, but I'm not so sure. I know that I am biased here, but apart from the fast startup, there's only one advantage that I see to text editors over IDEs these days. A modern IDE is a big complex piece of software. It can be intimidating, daunting for beginners. This seems to me a bit like comparing power tools to hand tools. You can get more done with the power tools. The hand tools you might, if you're in the hands of a master craftsman, might be able to do a better job, but they'll do a better job slower. But it probably helps to have some of the basics of how to handle tools in the first 
place before you start using the power tools. My problem in saying this is that my learning evolved alongside many of these tools. I was forced to use basic editors first and the command line for everything because that's all there was. When IDEs came along and made life easier and more efficient, I already understood how compilers, make files, build scripts and so on worked. I've seen developers who can only work within one IDE and I think that's too limiting. In general, I would recommend anyone just starting out to you start with an IDE. It will give you more help early on. But start out learning just the basics. Try to avoid getting caught up in the complexity and sophistication that is built into modern IDEs. Use template projects to create something new. Then find out how to build your code and run some tests and, and how to use the editor. Once you're happy with that, maybe try doing the same thing in a text editor. You'll learn from both of these experiences, but long term, I'd recommend the IDE. The fast startup of a text editor is a very nice feature if you're working with a few small files. It puts you closer to the underlying tools, so it's ultimately more flexible. But the refactoring support and the ability to navigate a bigger code base makes the IDE the better choice for me. A good IDE helps you do more and catches more common mistakes sooner. Thank you for watching.